תודה רבי ג'ון, it's a blessing to be here with you in the house of God. רבי ריצ'רד, אני אקריא לך אימייל כמה ימים לפני כן, להגיד לך שאני אקריא לך ואני רוצה לדעת שכל פעם שאני חושב על אתכם, אני תמיד אקריא את זה ואת זה. כשאני מסתכל עליך, זאת אומרת, כשאני רואה את זה, אני תמיד אקריא את זה. אז זה נכון לראות אותך היום ולהגיד לך איזה חג מהחג 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 מהחג. one of the founders of the Messianic body. Yeah. So it's a blessing. Thank you so much for opening the door uh, to be here in the house. So Rabbi John and Becky, thank you so much as well for the spirit of hospitality. And thank you so much for the house of God to having me here with you this morning. You can hear my accent. So I'm talking in Hebrew. Are you singing songs in Hebrew? אז קל לי לדבר איתכם בעברית. You understand what did I say? You are singing songs in Hebrew, so fluent. <laughs> so why won't I speak with you Hebrew? In the, let's skip the English and let's go to, directly to Hebrew. Uh, it's a blessing to be here. I think it's the third time that I'm here, Bet Mashiach, and uh, I always love to come over here. I love to see the house of God, the people of God. And what, what strange two years we have had. Uh, and I hope uh, the corona die. We will do a Kaddish. We will do a Kaddish for corona. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> no, no, we will not do a Kaddish. You will say. <laughs> so my name is Guy Cohen. And Guy, it's not American name. Guy, it's Hebrew, Hebrew name. You know, every Hebrew name has a meaning. Like Yeshua, what does it mean, Yeshua? Salvation of God. Yah, it's God. Shua, save us. God saves us, salvation of God. So every Hebrew name has a meaning, and if you would like, later on we will have a questioning and can I can interpret your names if you would like to if, it, if it's in Hebrew it's Hebrew name um, so my name is Guy and Guy it means valley when you walk you know in between mountains it means valley not such a guy but Guy it means valley I always say that because many American and English people think that I'm my name is Guy so did you change your name to American name Guy no It's Hebrew name. When you go to Jerusalem, road number one, you know, you land in a Ben Gurion airport and you drive toward Jerusalem, there is a gate. At this Bet Shemesh, it's called the gate of the guy. Sha'ar Hagai. So the gate of the valley, the valley to come up to Jerusalem. So this is the meaning of my name. And my wife's name is Tali. And Tali, it means uh, dew, dew, fog. So when you walk in the morning, when you see the fog in the valley, it's beautiful and romantic, very nice. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. Yes. And we have four children, two boys and two girls. And uh, um, I, few years that I've been here, my hair was, uh, was black. Now it's became to be gray. This is why I have the cap, so you will not see. <laughs> I'm still a young man. So our, our oldest son is in the army, and our daughter, she's uh, serving as well uh, for the community after the school. And, and our son, the, the third son, is now going to the army. And I'm seeing, seeing all these years passing so quickly. I mean, the time is quickly. The days of men is quickly ch changed. Wow. Just yesterday they were born. Just yesterday we were delivering them and dedicating them to the Lord. And wow, it's beautiful to see how time runs fast. Uh, and we, our little one, Omer, she is 12. And I'm not going to interpret the names, but every name has a meaning. Um, the Lord put on my heart a calling to come to the nation 
and to teach about the roots of the Jewish people, with the roots of the Bible, and to connect between the Jewish and Gentile, and to speak about what we are doing in the land of Israel. So later on, I will show you some pictures, what's going on in the land, but a little bit about testimony, how this guy, guy, came to know Yeshua as his Lord and his Savior. You know, I don't like to come to preach and teach immediately, and you know, I love to connect. I'm, I'm a, I love to one-on-one -on -one to connect personally. So, I was Orthodox Jewish. I study in the Orthodox Jewish environment. And when um, I was 13 years old, you know, in the, in the Judaism, at the age of 13, the father came to the child and he, he blessed him, blessed him. And the blessing goes like this. Thank you, Lord, for releasing me from the iniquities of this man. <laughs> because until the age of 13, you can make a lot of sins and the father, your father pays for it. But from the age of 13 ahead, you stand alone before God. And that's why they put the tefillin and there is a, there is a change in life from being a child to be a young man. So in that season, I was always searching about God, to know about God. Who is he? Why we are here in Israel? Who am I? And um, when, while we were studying in, in the Orthodox school, we were reading from Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. And over there it says that the Messiah will come to Jerusalem on a donkey. So I asked my rabbi the question, simple question. Rabbi, how could it be that the Messiah, the savior of the world, the redeemer, he will come on a donkey? It's a shame. We have a nice cars, we have a nice roads. I will drive it with my car and he will drive on the donkey to Jerusalem. I could not understand it. So my rabbi took the word donkey in Hebrew because it says, behold and see, the Messiah will come on a donkey on the call to Jerusalem. And he took the word donkey, took the word donkey. Let's do it in Hebrew lesson, Hebrew lesson. He took the word donkey. You know how, how do you say donkey in Hebrew? Ha, ha. You know, in, in heaven, we are going to study Hebrew. We're going to speak Hebrew. So practice with the ha, mo, rrr, ha, mo, rrr. So he took the word chamor, which it is donkey, and he changed it to chomer. Chamor. Chomer. Chamor, chomer. If you are listening, it's a little bit the same, but it's a different meaning. Because chamor, it's a donkey. And chomer, it's material. So he said to me, well, my son, the Messiah will come on a homer, on a material, because we are living in a material world. You know this song, yes? <laughs> so he believed that the Messiah will come on a material. What kind of the material? We have cars, we have airplanes. And so this rabbi was from the stream of the people who believe in, in Schneerson from Brooklyn, New York, that he is the Messiah. So he believed that Schneerson will come on the airplane to Jerusalem and drive us the car, and he is our Messiah. When I listened to this, I said, mm, did not, it did not settle in my heart. While I was functioning Orthodox life, but I always find out myself condemned because we don't have sacrifices today. Yes, we have prayers, we have uh, uh, zakah to give out to, to the needy and change your heart, but there is no sacrifices. 
So how can I be righteous in the eyes of God? I'm always content. I saw their teaching, Barabbas' teaching, was teaching from the Bible one way and living a life different way. So I realized that something's wrong over here. At the age of 18, I cry out to God. And I said, God, where are you? Why we are here in the land of Israel? Why did you brought us back to the land of Israel? I am a Jewish on my father's side from, yeah, from uh, Morocco, who were exiled from Spain, Portugal, French, and then to Israel. So I, this is the lineage from my father's side. And on my mother's side, I'm a Jewish from Yemen who came to the land. So I remember that I talked to my grandmother and she said, and she said to me, I asked her why, why we are here in the land of Israel. And she said, uh, the, God brought the eagles to bring us to the land of Israel so we will be redeemed. You, you know this, this verse, it says, on the eagle's wings. I will bring you on the eagle's wings. So the Jewish from Yemen, who were in the mountains, were, were hitting because of the Islam and the Muslims, were killing them, and they were, were hitting in the mountains. They always look at the eagles in the sky, that one day those eagles will take us back to the land of Israel. And you know, one person came out to, uh, in uh, 1948, when the state of Israel was exist, one person from the Israeli government sent out to Yemen and told them, the Jewish people, come down to, to the uh, Aden uh, airport. The, the eagles are waiting for you there to take you back to the land. And so the Yemen, Yemenite Jewish people went down from the mountains and they saw these big eagles, the airplanes. And you know which, what was the name of the company that brought them? It was Alaska Airlines. <laughs> it was a believer that, that knew this promise about the eagles and he sent those, these Alaska Airlines, they took all, out all the chairs and all this. And so the people just, the, the Yemenite Jews were packed in the airplane and they brought them back to the land on the eagle's wings. So I asked my grandmother what we are doing here in the land. And she said, we are now in the land and, and the Messiah will open our eyes to see him. Waiting for the Messiah to come because we are here. Now we are looking for him to come and open our eyes. So when I was 18 years old, I asked my I asked God, where is the Messiah? Why we are here in the land of Israel? We have wars, we have bombs, and we have a lot of fights. And why we are here? And I said, why the rabbis control? And I pour out my heart and I said, God, open my eyes to see the Messiah. I want to know who is he. And God talked to me like you talked to Abraham. You know, Abraham was not a Torah observant. But God chose him. He saw his heart toward him. And, and thanks to Abraham, we all sit down over here today. And I said, God, talk to me like you talk to Abraham. Great Orthodox life still functioning, uh, um, you know, keeping Shabbat and, and feast and all these, going to the synagogue, but not rabbinical style. Five years later, uh, I, when I was, in the, I was in the army and after finishing the army, um, I studied to be a CPA. At that, at that time, I worked in the Israeli IRS as a tax collector. You love them, no? They are good people. They're... So I worked as a, as a tax collector with the Israeli IRS. And at noon, uh, after eating lunch, I went back to the office, walking back to the office, and one guy came to me, handed me a book into my hand. So I received this book from him, looking at the, this book, and turning back to him, no, no, I don't want it, take it. This guy was not there. When I just made this move to give him this book, this guy was not there. I looked to the left, to the right, 
he was not there, but the book was in my hand. I went to the office and I opened it. It was the Gospel by Matthew, which he was, was his, was his uh, position, <laughs> tax collector. Do you realize that Yeshua loved the tax collectors? You should love them like he loved them. <laughs> so the book, the gospel by Matthew, and I open it in chapter 5. Uh, over there it says, if your eyes sins, pluck it out. If your hands sins, cut it. It's better for you to suffer here on this earth and winning the eternal life. And I said, wow. Strong, very strong. If there is a part in my body that avoids for me to come into the presence of God and be with him, I don't want it. I want fully to be with him. And who is he? It's Yeshua. Yeshua. I know Yeshua. Yes, I know. But I know bad things about Yeshua. He has a bad reputation. And then I said, wait a minute. Yeshua, Yeshua was, was a rabbi. Yes, he was a Jewish. Yes, most of the world believed in him. His disciples were Jewish. You know what? Let's read the New Testament. Just for education. You know, another book to read. And I started to read from the New Testament. And I arrived to Matthew 21, verse 7. Over there, Yeshua came to Jerusalem on a... No, come on, we, we study Hebrew. Come on. Ha. Good. Ha. Mo. You know, when I saw this word hamor in Hebrew, like my eyes was like, wow. And it was so obvious that he is the Messiah, that Yeshua is the Messiah. And in that evening, I accepted, accepted him to be my Lord and my Savior, my Mashiach. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you know, as a good Jewish people, we, when something uh, bad happens to us, we like to complain. And when something good happens to us, we like to? Yeah, good, you know my people. <laughs> we like to complain. Look at the Bible, always miracles and mighty with God and complaining. I mean, Moses went into this journey with this nation for 40 years, and he's always, they always complained. Wow. Well done, Moses. The complaining. So I complain. Why me? Why, why did you open my eyes? What do you want from me? Everyone around me are, are, are strangers. You know, they, don't, they don't know Yeshua, and I'm, I'm I'm not, I will not be accepted in their eyes. And, and so the Lord showed me that he's going to redeem my people. He's going to redeem Israel. He's going to open their eyes. And it says that 10% of Israel will be saved. Yes? 20%. 30%. You know what? 90%. 99%. 99.999999 All Israel will be saved. I did not say that. He said that. It. It's his job. He will do that. God is going to redeem my people. He's going to redeem the nation of Israel. And it's not easy in Israel right now because we see how the people are still rejecting Messiah. But God is going to open their eyes. It's, it's going to be in supernatural power to break through and bring a revival to my nation. And they will be saved. Israel will be saved. And thank you so much for your prayers and your love. We go, this Torah, this uh, Torah portion, it's called Truma. It means offering, Nachon, Truma. So why it it does not call tithe, but the parashat, the Shavua, the Torah portion, why you don't call it the tithe portion? Why it's called Tuma portion, the offer, offering portion? Because tithe, it's the only 
And Toma, the offering, is more than tithe. And God is calling us to give him more than 10%. Actually, personally, I understand that everything that I have in my life, it's his. Nothing that I have, it's mine. So I'm not going to be, you know, these people that keep their money in the pocket, they don't want to give it out. I don't know how to call it uh, in English. But I don't want to be on his bill. This is, it's his money. And I want to be 100% to give to him for his kingdom. And the Torah portion of this week, and if you can show this verse in Ex Ex Exodus chapter 25, verse 8, and you told that you love this verse, yes? Um, it says, and let them make me a, a, a sanctuary that I will uh, dwell among them. Bivrit, in Hebrew, it's much more nice to say. Banuli mishkan veshachanti betucham. And they will build me a tabernacle, and I will be dwell in them. What does it mean? You remember, all the nation of Israel now are command to bring their offerings and tithe and the wealth for building the tabernacle. Now we have the tabernacle built in, in front of our eyes. It's a beautiful building. But do you think this is what God wants, just the, the building, the empty tents? or these tents, he wants to dwell in them. So when we will see this tabernacle, we know that God is dwelling not in the tabernacle, he's there as well, but he wants to dwell in me, in each one of us. God wants God want to dwell in the heart of the mankind. And that's where that's the meaning of this of this verse. When when we look at the body of Yeshua, this is the real house of God, the people of God, you and I, we are a living stone in the house of God. So I love this building, it's a beautiful building, and I respect. But you, each one of you, is the treasure. And, and in your life, it's worth more than, than the building. Because God wants to dwell in you, in each one of us. Uh, when Pet Peter, Peter um, recognized Yeshua, that he is the Messiah, son of the living God, Yeshua asked him, uh, the disciples over there in uh, Caesarea uh, Philippi, it's in the near Kiryat Shmona, um, in the Banyas. By the way, I'm a tour guide, so when you come to Israel, you're welcome. I can take you to those places. For me, it's like one hour from my home. It's not far away. But anyway, in that place, Yeshua, uh, Peter, received this revelation that Yeshua, he is the Messiah, son of the living God. And Yeshua said to him, Amen, I'm telling you, on this base of this knowledge and foundation, I will build my kehila, my congregation. Because God's heart is that we will be the house of God. You know, the bride of the Lord, we have a lot of denominations and we have a lot of kinds of ways of worshiping God, Yeshua. But we have one bride. We are one. We are one body. And so God wants to change my heart. And in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5, it says, You are the living stones in the house of God. I will read it in a, my neglecting English. Forgive me. You also, a living stone, are built up as a spiritual house for the holy priesthood to offer up a spiritual spiritual sacrifice acceptable to God through Yeshua HaMashiach. You are the house of God. 
We are the living stones. You know, uh, 2005, no, 2004, the Lord, uh, the Lord touched my wife in my heart to bring up, uh, to build a congregation, uh, especially of worshiping and praising him in the city of Akko. And then, and, and we work in the humanitarian aid and prayer meeting and teaching. And, and so we've had this group of people. We were 15 people at the time sitting in meetings once a week uh, at our home. And then the people said, God, we agree with you. Uh, we agree with you uh, for the congregation, Harvest of Asher. Um, where is the building? Where is the building? So I said, okay, I will go to God and I will ask him, where is the building? So I went up to, I went to the, once a week I'm going to, I'm taking a day of prayers and waiting on the Lord and, and praying to him. And, and that, at that time I prayed to God, God, where is the building? Where is the house of God? And he took me to this verse. And, and when I look at this, okay, you are the living stones. You are the house of God, each one of you. So I went to the people of the congregation with this revelation. You are the living stones. You are the house of God. We are together. And they said, yes, amen, and halle, hallelujah. And everyone was, wow, yes, we are the living stones. And then they told me, but where is the building? <laughs> people, I can tell you, I point, uh, the, the Lord gave me the date in May 2005 to dedicate the congregation. And almost one month before uh, we sent invitation to people from all over the world and come in May, we're going to dedicate the congregation in the forest uh, of Harvest of Asher. Uh, and and uh, we did not have the building. Uh, and, you know, I said, okay, we will meet in the house, in the, in the home group. We will do this congregation the home, like the first century congregation, yes? And we sent out invitations, and then two weeks before the appointed time, a couple from Korea, the Holy Spirit touched them, and they came to me and said, Guy, the Lord touched us to come to Akko to rent a big house, and so you can use the living room for, for the meeting. And that's the way we started in the house, in, the living, in their living room. Once a week in the Jewish neighborhood on Friday evening, then the congregation began to be grow and grow and grow. And then after one year, they moved out of the house and we took over the house. After three years, we, the congregation grew and we moved outside and we have our own building right now. It's another story. But just to tell you that when this is the living stones. It's not about the building. It's good, the tools. It's very, very important. It's needed. But you are the important. You are the house of God. It's about the people. It's about the, the lost around us. They need to know Yeshua. If, you know, you look, look at our time. You know, if I will tell you that the end times, you know, that before Yeshua will come, we will go to Hawaii and we will sit on the beach and say, Yeshua, come, come, Lord. <laughs> and we will see the sun come up and, you know, very nice uh, view. And no, it's going to be a hard times. The last two years we've had this corona and, and other fleas and other things that's happening in our, in, around in, in our life. We are in the end. And it's a time for the salvation of mankind. And if I say to you, all Israel will be saved, what about the Gentiles? These are blessings as well for the Gentiles. All the Gentiles will be saved. And this is the rule for you here in this area, to your neighbor, to, to your neighborhoods, to your people, to reflect Yeshua. Thank God this body will be, you know, it's maybe 90, 100, okay, 120. But it will be vanished. It will, it's lost. It's there is the Spirit of God in this body. And I believe that the Spirit of God is in every mankind. And no, we are not come from the, from the monkeys on the trees. 
became, we were made by his image. And he's, he's looking for every mankind to be redeemed. He wants us back to him. So for us as a congregation, we are, need to look at him. Uh, I wanted to finish with this First Peter chapter 3, verse 8 till 12. And then I will, we will go to the slide. But uh, before this, you know the song, Mia Ish Chafetz Chaim? You know this? Who is the person who searched for a life? It says here, first, I will read from verse 10. For the one who desire life to love and see God days must keep his tongues from evil and his... You know what? You will read it in English. I will sing it to you in Hebrew. Sing it to you in Hebrew, not read it to you. I'm not a good singer. By the way, my, I have a relative that is a famous singer in Israel. But in the end, I'm, I'm the only one who became, to, you know, without, without, without a good voice. So, so. You can go to the next. This is the character that we must to walk as a follower in Yeshua. And it says that the eyes of God is looking on the earth for a man with a heart toward him. And I want to be this man. You want to be this one. Searching him, wait, waiting on him. We are the living stones. We are the house of God. I would like to, would like to change to show you some pictures of what's going on in Israel. Um, so um, in last May, uh, we've had a big clash in Israel. Um, all the mixed cities uh, in the land, uh, which it's mixed cities when I say it's Arabs and Jewish who are living together. So you have Yafo, Jaffo, you have Lod, you have Ramle, you have Akko, the city that where we are located. The harvest of Asher is in Akko. And it was because of the Ramadan, the Islam. And then it was a big riot uh, because of El Aqsa. Something happened over there. But all these, um, all these cities who live together, Jewish and Arabs live together. By the way, Arabs, uh, when I say Arabs, it's not just, uh, it's inside of Arabs. You have Muslims and you have Christians. You have Muslims, Arab Muslims, and you have Arabs Christians. So I'm referring to the Arabs Muslims. Okay? And it was, it was a big clash in those cities. And up to this moment, it was like we lived together. When we were neighbors, living in the same block, same building, and neighbors. And it, it was exploding for, in front of our eyes. And the reason that I'm saying it to you is without Yeshua, Without Yeshua, it will not be a peace between mankind. Even between me and my wife, if Yeshua is not there. So without Yeshua in, 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 in the land of Israel, I mean, we can try to be nice and charisma and all this, but it will be explored. Yeshua must be in the center. But anyway, Israel is not saved yet. And it was a big, big clash. And then, um, you know, one of the call for the harvest of Asher is to pray for the city and pray for the area. And my heart was broken, personally. My heart was broken. I said, God, how did it happen? How? Because we were praying for, for a, 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 a revelation, a, a, a redemption, that God will open their eyes. We were praying for this, 
God pour out and then we see this. And, and then I just said, okay, God, I'm waiting on you. And I don't know if you know Avi Mizrahi. Uh, he's, a, he's a Messianic rabbi in Tel Aviv. He called me and he said, Guy, I, the Spirit leads me that we will come together first to Akko, to your congregation and to your place, Arab and Jewish in Yeshua. I, said, I told you, so there are Arab Christians. And so they came, let's go to the next picture. They came to the congregation and we've done together, this is the building of Harvest of Asher. And uh, we came together, uh, leaders from all over the land, Arabs and Jewish. We've done the Lord's Supper together, praying together. And, and then we went out to the streets, to the place where all the riots started. You know, uh, one of the, one of the stories that there is a hotel in the city of Akko. And Akko is a, it's like more tourist, tourism city. And in this hotel, one of the children worker, he is the one that put the fire in the hotel. And, and it was one of the guests that died in this hotel. So we went inside this hotel, we went inside the place, and we were praying for forgiving. And we said, we are one in Yeshua. We, we, we claim the land. And that's like the call of the believers. You see, we, every place that our foot will step, it will be a blessing. And so we went there and we, cl we claimed the city to Akko Jewish and Arab. So you see in the pictures, uh, both together. Let's go to the next picture. This is Harvest of Asher at the dedication um, when now we have elders. Uh, this is for, for five years ago. Um, so let's go to the next one. The reason that I give you this picture, you know, we, in Israel, we have a lot of lovers around us. We have Lebanon, we have Jordan, we have Egypt, and we have Gaza, and we have the, the West Bank, and we have the ocean, the Mediterranean Sea. And all, all those lovers, they want to, they want to hug us and, and pour out their love with, with rockets and, you know, with, with guns, all this. But this is actually a tunnel that they've been ex excava excavated from Lebanon. And uh, the Israeli IDF now is doing a tourism to UN people that coming to show them that this is what Hezbollah is doing on the northern border of Israel. And one time, Israel, I mean, on one of the tunnels that Israel excavated, uh, I'm speaking to you about three years ago, we put the cement inside of the tunnels. And then when you look at toward Lebanon, on the other side of Lebanon, in the houses, then you see this, this cement goes outside from this house from the, in the Lebanon. Why? It's, they built tunnels in, in the houses from Lebanon, so they want to conquer the Galilee area. So... Why I'm saying it to you, we are in the end time, and the next war that is going to be happen is going to come from Lebanon. So pray for us and pray for the Lebanese people because Israel is going to hit very strong in, in this war. Next one, next picture. This is uh, from Gaza. Uh, this is uh, in it's Be'eri, it's uh, near Be'er Sheva, and, and you can see the soldiers over there uh, looking toward Gaza, viewing over Gaza, because uh, uh, always there is rocket to the road, and there is, it's not finished. It's a big party in Israel. Let's go to the next picture. Um, this is one of the ministries that we are doing, uh, and thank you so much for supporting our ministry. Bet Messiah is supporting us, and I would like to give thanks for this. And, and, and what we are doing with the support that we receive is reaching out to our community. And one of the ways of reaching out to our community is uh, food baskets, giving food basket, helping needy in our city, uh, showing the love of Yeshua. And, and thank you so much because we, as a Messianic body in the land, we are not from the strong society. But thanks to you, thanks for you standing with us, we can show the love of God and it's a win-win because when you do it through the believers 
it's, it's bringing us in front of our community in a way that we are respected. And so we're doing a lot of projects, a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, single mothers, we help uh, orphans, we help schools, we help electricity and gas, whenever needed. We have a humanitarian aid activity and we are reaching out to our community. And the reason that we have this train is because it's, the, it's Yad Vashem in Jerusalem. Yad Vashem is for the Holocaust Museum. So we also help to the uh, Holocaust survivors and now they are minority. It means we are already, already die, almost die. So we help the uh, Holocaust survivor and, and with food and with heat because when you come to the Holocaust survivor home, you find out that in the winter they don't have a heater and they don't have a uh, way of living and that's what we are doing. Reflecting Yeshua, reflecting the love of God. Let's go to the next one. Uh, during the corona, uh, we have done, we have a soup kitchen in Akko and we, we, dis we distribute food to the people's ho houses or so they came uh, to the soup kitchen to take this food and we were delivering it. Let's go to the next one. Another, it's the same, we're pre preparing the food in the, in this uh, canes and, and giving out more. Let's go to the next one. I, five years ago, here in Houston, it was a big flood, yes? Five years ago? So in Naharia, a city near Akko, two years ago, it was a huge flood. And so we, um, we uh, helped the people, you know, to pump out the water and, and uh, renew the furni furniture. This is uh, boxes of uh, soup uh, for the people and mattresses so we can go to the next, next picture. Uh, and we, we provide the, all this, uh, like a sofa and all, and reaching out, giving out to the community. And let's go to the next one. And you can see the damage, so we help to check it out. This is a pastor from Naria. Uh, a, a fine, and so we help him and his congregation to reach out to their people in the city. Let's go to the next one. And uh, yeah, the same. So it was a group that came from the United States to volunteer, and we would like to also open an in, in, uh, invitation, Pastor John, uh, Rabbi John, if you want, feel you're welcome to communicate, and we, we can do uh, humanitarian aid in city. In, in the north area of Akko. So reaching out to the community will provide mattresses, beds, and all this. Uh, next one, electricity and all, it's all humanitarian. Next one, I think we are finishing. This is the damage, so it's okay with the pictures. If you would like to have more pictures, we can, we can send it to you, give it to you. But it's a compassion. We show compassion of God to our community. We show the love of God to our community. I can say, when I'm coming to a Jewish person and say, in the name of Yeshua, this is for you, he will say no. He will say no. But if you come and reflect the light of Yeshua in you to, to the community, and don't speak Yeshua, but live Yeshua. <laughs> so it's open, and it's open relationship. It's open communication. And then they ask the question, what, what do you have? You know, we, we the Jewish people, we like to ask a lot of questions. Why do you help me? What do you want from me? <laughs> and so, so we love you. We want to reflect the love of God. And it's building a relationship and, and bringing them to know Yeshua.